welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's Monday, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for a five by five. This is where I talk about five subjects related to magic. I give myself five minutes to talk about each subject. There is a timer at the bottom of the screen. When the timer hits zero, I move on to this next subject. It's quick, it's snappy, you never know what you're gonna get. Today, it is a business five by five special. A few weeks ago on a QA, and a I did a, uh, a Q&A all about becoming a professional magician and it was very well received. And I know a lot of people are interested, especially with the world opening up now, about how to get more gigs, how to market themselves correctly, and all of that fun stuff. And as I have said on this channel over and over again, my goal is that when I hit 10,000 subs, I am setting up a second YouTube channel all about the business of magic. And it's going to be specifically about marketing and business advice for magicians and entertainers and performers and actors and people like that, how to actually explode your business. So if you want to see more of that content, make sure that we get to 10,000 subs. That's my goal. That's when I actually set up the second channel. It's all set up and ready to go. It just needs to uh, have me hit my goal. However, in the meantime, a lot of people have been asking about marketing and getting gigs. So I thought I'd try a different thing with the 5x5 five five this week and do a business 5x5. Five five. I'm going to give you five tips that you can put into your business immediately that should help you get more work. It should help you get more work. It should help you get more gigs. These are five random ideas that I've used through my career. And I promise you that if you listen to what I'm telling you and you incorporate it into your business. And remember, even if you're a self-employed magician, whether you're a semi-professional, uh, whether you just do the odd gig or two, whether you're a full-time pro, you're, you have a business. Magic is your business. If you incorporate this into your business, it will get you more gigs. So without further ado, let's have a look at the first tip. So the first tip that I'm going to give you is all about business cards. I see people obsessing about business cards all the time and, oh, what should I have in my business card and what business card should I have? In fact, I've seen people on Facebook, they post new business card designs every two weeks um, and, and, and they're not really meeting everyone to give them out to. So here's the thing about business cards. One, don't obsess about business cards. These days, most people throw them away anyway. Let's be honest. You go to a gig, you give out hundreds of business cards, most people will throw them in the bin or they'll get home and they'll be left in their jacket pocket and eventually they'll throw them in the bin. It's very rare that people hold on to them and, uh, and, and keep it just in case they need a magician. It can happen, but it's rare. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to business cards, I'm not saying you don't have a business card, but just, just pick one and just be done with it and make sure it's on brand, absolutely. But here's what you want to do. When you're at a gig, right, because that's when you give out business cards, right, either when you're networking or when you're at a gig. If you're networking or you're at a gig and somebody says to you, oh, I'd like a business card, normally they have an event in mind that they ask, they're asking you about. Most people don't just ask for a business card just to keep on file, just in case. If you're at a gig and they see you perform and they ask for a business card, it might be that they've got an event coming up. It might be that they've got a friend who's got an event coming up. Maybe their daughter's getting married. I don't know what it is, but they're going to have something. So you say to them at that point, absolutely, I can give you a business card. Have you got something specific in mind? And at which point you can turn around to that. They they'll probably turn around to you and say, yes, it's my 60th birthday in a year's time or whatever it may be and you go perfect I uh, yeah, that's the sort of event that I specialize in I do lots of events like that whatever the event is that they say you do lots of events like that so immediately from a sales point of view uh, they've had a positive, positive affirmation that yes, you do that type of gig. And then you say, look, would you like me to very quickly check my diary to see if I'm, I'm, I'm free? Have you got a date in mind? Yes, it's this date. Oh, amazing. I am free. No problem. Uh, it's getting very busy though. Would you like me to give you a call in a few days and just talk you through what I can do at your event for you? Would you like me to give you a call and talk you through? Now, anybody who's asked for a business card, think about this for a minute. Anybody who's asked for a business card, they, they have an event in mind, they've watched you perform, they're thinking that you are perfect for that event. So yes, of course, they are going to want to speak to you. In all the years that I've asked this question at events, at no point has anyone said, no, please don't call me. They all say, yes, yes, please call me, call me about that particular thing. And then you go, okay, fantastic. Because I can't speak about it now, obviously I'm trying to do magic here, but if you give me your phone number, have you got a business card or can I take your phone number down and I'll give you a call in a few days, when's good for you? Um, Monday, okay, I'll give you a call on Monday. Is there a particular time that's good? Three o'clock, okay, brilliant. I'll give you a call on Monday at three o'clock. Let me take your phone number. 
number down is my business card. Um, have a look at that if you want to, uh, you know, check out my website in the meantime. Obviously, you've seen what I do, but I'll give you a call on Monday. Now, what you've done there is you have created a warm lead for yourself. Because if you've just given that person a business card, if somebody said to you, oh, yeah, have you got a business card? Yeah, here you go. Thanks very much. What would have happened is they would have put it away, they would have got home, in all likelihood they would have took their suit off a few weeks later when they go to put the suit on again for the next function, they find this thing in the pocket and they can't remember what it's for and they chuck it away. And then when they eventually come to planning the entertainment for that gig, um, instead of they, they probably won't remember your name. So instead, they'll just go, oh, what was the name of that magician? I can't remember. Oh, let's just Google somebody. And then they're going to go with the person who's got the best SEO or the, the, the highest pay-per-click uh, pay uh, buy rate. So... The point that I'm trying to make here is if you start a conversation with them and you find out what specifically they are looking for and what specifically they need your business card for, you can then turn that into a warm lead. So then instead of waiting for them to come to you, you're now in the situation where you can ring them up and you can go, hey, how's it going? I met you at the event the other week. You asked me to give you a call. I was just giving to give you a call about your 60th birthday. Right, you saw what I did at the uh, at the event that you saw me at, that was called Close Up Magic. Is that the sort of thing you're looking for? It is, perfect, right. And then you can get into a sales pitch. So much better. I have I have booked so many gigs and I have converted so many inquiries into bookings by doing this one simple approach. So for this first tip, the, the basically to sum it up, when you when you are at an event, don't just give business cards out willy-nilly, but try to get information off people that show an interest in you as a performer. That will create warm leads. Those warm leads will turn into bookings, which will ultimately, um, you know, create more turnover for your magic business. So in that last tip, I talked about networking events. And I can honestly say that when I first started as a magician, one of the best things that I did was I went networking to professional networking organizations. And I see a lot of magicians that kind of, uh, poo poo this idea and they go oh no no I'm not going to waste my time networking that doesn't work for me well trust me I grew a reasonably sized business through networking networking is a fantastic way to develop more business and to help grow your business and help to get more gigs so what is networking well networking basically um, the, the way that I advocate doing it is going to business networking events. Now, in the UK, there's a few different business networking events. The big boys are BNI and Four Networking. And I started with BNI, but for the last few years, I've been a Four Networking advocate, which is Brad Burton's networking event. Now, uh, in the US, I know that BNI is a thing. BNI is pretty much worldwide, but there's going to be other networking organizations as well. The best way to find a networking organization is to just Google it, is to just go business networking events and then put your area and you'll find lots of different web pages and lots of different uh, things that are out there. So what is a business networking organization? Well, basically, it's normally a breakfast meeting. It can be a lunch or a dinner meeting, but normally it's a breakfast meeting. And what happens is you'd meet uh, a bunch of other like-minded like minded business owners. Um, you normally have breakfast with each other and then you talk about your businesses. You do this thing called a 60 second round where you stand up and you spend 60 seconds talking about your business to all the other business owners around the room. And then you, um, you know, normally have some sort of informal networking time where you can chat to each other and exchange business cards. And, and you do that every single week. And normally you try to find referrals to people. So you'll try and pass work for people and people will try and pass work for you. That's what it's all about. Now, business networking can work really, really well. But there's two tips that I want to give you on this. First of all, if you find the right business networking event, what you don't want to do is go to one business networking event, get all super excited and sign up straight away. Go to the first one, have a think about it, go away, weigh up the pros and cons. What were the people like at the event that you went to? What was the vibe like? What was the atmosphere like? Then maybe go to another one and go to another one. You want to try and find people you want to try and find a business networking sort of organization where there's um, people representing industries that can pass you business. Now, any industry can pass you business, but there's certain industries where uh, there's kind of a synergy with a magician. So, for example, event planners, event planners are amazing because obviously they're playing events, they need a magician, you're a, you're a magician, you can pass events onto them, they can pass events onto you, vice versa. Also, chauffeurs, 
uh, caterers, uh, DJs, uh, wedding um, sort of venues, anything like that, or just corporate venues, any sort of venue, all those sort of people, if you can find uh, a power team, and what a power team is, it's a collection of uh, sort of businesses from certain industries that pass each other work. If you can find somewhere like that, that's great because you'll be able to give each other work a lot of the time. So first of all, find the right place to go to. Second of all, understand that you have to work at it. It's not going to happen overnight. I've spoke to magicians who said that they've tried networking and given it up because they have no work from it and they only went to one meeting. It takes time. You need to, get, need to go for a few meetings because networking is all about building up a relationship. People need to get to know, like and trust you. Why should they pass on your details? So you stand at an event and go, I'm a magician, please recommend me to all your clients to hire me for their events. Well, they don't know you. They don't know who you are. They don't know if you're trustworthy. They don't know if you're going to turn up to the gig. They don't know if you're going to do a good job. So the first thing they need to do is get to know you and, and find out more about you and understand that you're a good magician and then they can recommend you to, uh, uh, to their clients. But that takes time. You've got to work at it. You've got to work at building up that relationship and try and pass work to them as well. So if you have somebody that rings you up and wants to book you for a magic gig, suggest, hey, I've got an event planner that, uh, that I work with. Are you working with an event planner? Is it okay if I pass on your details? Um, so, so pass them work as well. And building up that relationship, that's going to be the way that networking works for you. But it's not called net eating. It's not called net sleeping. It's called networking. You do have to work at it. Don't approach it as, oh, I'm just going to nip out for a couple of hours, have breakfast, chat to a few people, and then move on with my day. It's hard work but it can grow your business and it can lead to a lot of work. And, you know, when I was doing networking all of the time, I was getting referrals every week for gigs. Like I was having gigs coming left, right and centre from networking. So it's well worth doing, but you've got to do it right. On the subject of networking, when it comes to uh, the world that we're living in at the moment, there's a lot of virtual stuff going on. So let's talk about virtual networking. And when you think about virtual networking, you think about LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn is a social media um, it's a social media platform specifically for businesses and LinkedIn can be so powerful for your business. Let me explain why. With LinkedIn, right, what you have is instead of having, you know, like on Facebook, you have friends and on YouTube, you have subscribers. On LinkedIn, you have connections and you can have first degree, second degree or third degree connections. A first degree connection is somebody you're connected with. You're just connected to that person um, and, and it, it's the equivalent to having a friend. A second degree connection is like a mutual friend on Facebook. So it's somebody who you're, uh, somebody who's not connected to you directly, but they're connected to somebody who you're connected with. And then obviously it goes the same for third degree connections. Now, you can use this whole concept to get loads of high quality gigs. And let me explain how, and I'm going to briefly synopsize this for you. So what you want to do, let's say that you found out that a company is organizing a gala dinner for their, uh, for their company. Or let's, uh, let's say that uh, there's a big gala dinner being organized or whatever it may be. It's gone onto your radar. Uh, you've seen it online. It's in your local area and you want to be the MC for that event. You want to be the entertainer or the magician for that event. How do you make that happen? Well, normally when this sort of thing goes online, there's a person, there's an organizer name on there hey for you know for any information about this event please contact blah there's an organizer on there they're normally the person that's putting all of this together right now they will be on linkedin anybody who's organizing an event like this will be on linkedin so what happens is you then go on linkedin and you search for their name and what you're going to find is LinkedIn will, you'll eventually find them. Maybe it'll help if you put the geographical area they're in or something like that. And what will happen is LinkedIn will show you how many mutual connections you've got, how many second degree connections. In other words, how many people you're connected to that are also connected to this person. And as a side note, this is why it's important. And you'll see this in a second. It's why it's important that when you connect with somebody on LinkedIn, you know them. Don't just send someone a connection request that you've never heard of before and go, hey, just so you know, uh, I'm interested in connecting with you because you look interesting. No, connect with people who you know that you can pick up the phone and have a conversation with. So if you meet somebody at a networking event or at a gig, add them on LinkedIn. Get used to adding people on LinkedIn all the time. Because what you're going to do is you're going to look at that list of second degree connections. Let's say there's 10 people. You're going to email those 10 people within LinkedIn. You're going to send them a message and you're going to say, hey, how you doing? Uh, hope you can help me. I want to become the entertainment at this event that's coming up. And the organizer is blah. 
I can see you're connected to Blah. Would you mind putting a recommendation together for me and, and send it off to them? I'd really appreciate it. Now, what's going to happen is this is what people do on LinkedIn all the time. This is not a strange request. So that person on LinkedIn, um, let's say you've contacted 10 people, like most of them, <laughs> seven or eight of them will say, yeah, no problem. And so what they'll do is they'll send a message over to this person that's organizing this event going, hey, have you heard of this magician? His name's Craig. I think it'd be awesome for your event. You might want to get in touch with him. Now, think about it from the organizer's point of view. She's organizing an event or he's organizing an event. They've got a ton of stuff to, to plan. They know they've got to plan entertainment and they've just had some people that they're connected with that they've obviously got a relationship with contacting them saying, hey, you should speak to this person. Well, what's that organizer going to do? They're more than likely going to contact you or they're going to check out your profile or they're going to um, uh, message you or, or whatever it may be. Every time I've used this particular strategy, I've had like literally within a week, I've had like the person I'm trying to get in touch with go, hey, and send me a message and say, how you doing? I'd love to connect with you, which is great because now you've got in with that person without even needing to do anything. You haven't even needed to pick up the phone and do a cold call. You've got in with them. And worst case scenario, if they don't contact you, you're still going to be on their radar. So if you then drop them an email a week later or phone them up or whatever and say, hey, I've been told by some of my connections on LinkedIn to reach out to you. My name's Craig. I'm a magician. I think I can help you with your event. Is it OK if we can talk? They're going to say yes. So it's a way of generating warm leads. And again, I've, that, that, this is the second time I've mentioned warm leads, but leads are so important to a business. Leads lead to, you, you, there's no point in thinking about sales if you haven't got leads, because the leads are what you use to create the sales, which in turn creates the bookings. And you wanna create as many leads as you can from as many different places as you can. And this is a great way to create high quality leads without spending any money, and uh, all you've gotta do is put some work in. So the next thing that I wanna to talk to you about is the customer journey. Now, I know what you're thinking, what's the customer journey? Most people that are watching this will not have even heard of the concept of the customer journey before. The customer journey is something that myself and Sarah, um, who you know is the camera lady behind the camera, she's obviously my business partner in everything I do, we seriously spend a lot of time and effort thinking about the customer journey within our business. The customer journey basically is the experience that a person has from booking, no, not even from booking, from initial inquiry. From initial inquiry all the way through to after sales. And you need to think about what happens to that person along that journey, if that makes sense. What happens to that person? And the way to do this, and you want to be mastering this, you want to have your customer journey better than anyone else in your industry. And the best way to do that is to do uh, a competitor analysis. And what I mean by competitor analysis is try to work out what all your competitors are doing in terms of their customer journey. So let's just say you're a kid's entertainer. I need you to understand that when you're talking about a competitor analysis, we're not necessarily just talking about other kids entertainers. There is direct and indirect competition. Now, direct competition are other kids entertainers, absolutely. But indirect competition is something like a bowling park or a theme park or an ice rink or anywhere that does kids parties because that's indirect competition because ultimately somebody might book something like that instead of you. So it's competition, it's just indirect competition. And a lot of magicians obsess over direct competition, but really the, the most important thing to focus on is the indirect competition. So do a competitor analysis. Look at what all your direct and indirect competition is doing. So in the case of kids entertainment, when I did a, a competitor analysis many, many years ago, I looked at kids entertainers and everyone else was doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, somebody inquired, they'd get a phone call, um, they'd get an email or one phone call back, um, then they either booked or they didn't book, there was generally no deposit taken, there was no follow-up calls, there was no follow-up emails along the way, and they turned up and did the gig and then you never heard from them again. That was basically what the case was, it was very limited in terms of what pretty much all of the competitors did in this area. Um, so, so when I set up my kids' entertainment company, um, one thing that we did is we tried to think about how to make the, com the customer journey 
amazing so that people come back again and again because the thing and again using kids entertainment as an example if you've got a three-year-old that's having a kid's party they're going to have a party at four at five at six at seven at eight at nine but it's the same thing if you do a wedding for somebody uh, eventually they're going to come to you for a christening family parties uh you know 30th birthday parties retirement parties whatever it is you can get a client for life right so um the customer journey takes customers and turns them into a tribe of people that just advocate your brand and what you do. So think about how, how it works. So when people inquire, you know, what can you do in your inquiry process that, that makes it so much better to all of your competitors? Can you guarantee to answer the phone immediately? Or can you promise to call everyone back within a certain amount of time? And then when during the sales process, how can you improve that? What information can you send people to help them um, decide whether to book you or not? How, how can you actually sway that in your, in your favor? Then when they book in, how can you make that booking process so much easier? You know, people like paying deposits. It makes them feel secure about their booking. So if you've got in an area where a lot of people don't take deposits, and you start taking deposits, well, that's a, that's a big thing. And then, can you reach out to people? If they've booked in three months before their event, you know, send them an email a month before saying, hey, just checking in, hoping everything's okay. Send them an email a couple of weeks before. Can you send them a birthday card to their child uh, through the post saying happy birthday a couple of days beforehand? Can you pick up the phone and speak to them? Can you communicate with them by text message? What sort of stuff can you send to them that, you know, you know that, again, using a kid's entertainer as an example, that you know that you've got a child there. Can you send them something by email or send them a video that has something that their kid might be interested in watching? And then that goes through to after sales as well. All of this stuff you really need to think about. And it's the little things like this that when people are setting up their business, they forget about things like this. But it's the small things like this that make a massive difference. And it's the reason why people will come back to you again and again and again, which means that you have to do less marketing. So this is the most important thing that I'm going to tell you right now. Two words. Write it down on a big piece of paper. Zero point. And you're probably wondering what zero point is. Well, the Content Marketing Association, they talk about zero point all the time. Zero point, is, I'm not going to get into like a really complicated definition of what zero point is, but it is the concept or the philosophy, understanding that anybody who's inquiring about you and inquiring about your services, they will have already done quite a lot of research into you beforehand. These days, nobody just picks up the phone blind and rings somebody and just goes, hey, tell me about what you do. Nobody sends an email blind and just says, hey, tell me what you do. Generally, as a rule, people will do some research on the company, first of all. It's just what happens. Uh, Sarah's behind the camera here right now. I haven't prepped this with Sarah before. Let me ask you, Sarah, yeah. when was the last time that you bought something online and didn't look at customer reviews? Like, can you even... A long time ago. A long time. <laughs> these days... Unless it's just a little thing for the kids. But these days, if, you, if you're if buying something significant, do you compare reviews and look at reviews? Oh, yeah, always. And, and not just reviews. You kind of Google around and see if you can find as much about that, that, that company as possible, right? Yeah. That's... And Sarah's not... Sarah's mom, right? And she's not the only person to feel like that. Everybody does. Every, it's so easy these days to find out about what people are doing... Um, the, it's, it's, it's called doing your due diligence. Everyone does it. So if you accept that everybody looks around these days and starts looking for uh, reviews and pictures and videos and try to find out more about a company beforehand, then you need to accept that you need to make sure that your digital footprint is absolutely brilliant. Now, what do I mean by digital footprint? What I basically mean is what people find out about you when they research you online. So if somebody researches you or somebody researches your magic, what are they going to find? Are they going to find some good reviews? Are they going to find a website that's 15 years out of date that still like just looks like it was made in the 1990s? What are they going to find? Because that's really important. Because what you need to do is you need to put your customers into a position that when they pick up the phone and inquire with you, 
or when they send you that email or fill in that contact form, they have pretty much decided whether to book you or not. Because they've already they've found your website, they've found you online, they've found somewhere, and, and now they're in a situation where they're pretty much guaranteed they're going to book you. They're just checking availability. And you can always tell that when you get the initial email. When somebody emails or fills in a contact form or picks up the phone and rings you, they'll normally start with one of two things. They'll either say, I'm ringing to find out more about what you do or I'm ringing to check availability. Now, if they say that they're ringing to check availability, they're sold, that's it, done deal. You just need to quote them, book it in, job done. Because they've already, that leading with that, that for them is the most important thing. If they pick up the phone and they go, I, I wanna find out what you do, um, or, or what's even worse than that, I wanna know your price. Because if they're ringing up and they're wanting to know the price, they're not sold on you. That means they're just ringing around and they're just trying to find the cheapest or whatever it may be. If they ring up and they go, hey, I'm looking for a price, you know that you're going to have to do some work if you're going to convert them. You want to try and get it. So everybody who contacts you, they're contacting you because they want to check your availability. And that's down to your digital footprint. What do your videos look like? Um, what do your photos look like? How many blogs do you write? I absolutely hate it when I see a website where it's got a blog section and the last blog that was updated three and a half years ago, right? And then uh, there hasn't been, and then there was a blog six months ago saying, I haven't blogged for a while, but I'm going to be blogging regularly now. And that was six months ago. And then the photos look absolutely terrible. And, and all the photos are of the particular magician and none of them are of the spectators. Uh, what you want to do is you want to have it so that on your website, most of the photos are of people reacting because that's what people want to see. People want to see people reacting like that because that's what they want their guests to experience. They want to experience people losing their mind and having an amazing time. What they don't want to do is see over and over again pictures of you looking cheesy in a tuxedo. So understand about your digital footprint. Understand that you have to make your digital footprint look amazing with all the blogs you write, all the photos, all the reviews, the website, videos, absolutely everything must make people know that you are the person to book. So there you go, guys. That's another five by five in the bag. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you want to see more content like this, please let me know. As I said, if you do want to see more content specifically about business, uh, when I hit 10,000 subscribers, I will be setting up a channel specifically about business. So look out for that. But other than that, if you want to see more videos on this channel, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. If you have any questions about the stuff that I've covered today, again, please let me know in the comments down below. And I'm going to be back again tomorrow at uh, what, uh, tomorrow at nine o'clock with the talk magic. I'm going to be it's going to be um, at six o'clock with a live and at two o'clock a short. So I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.